Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, let me just make... All right, this is on. Hey, what's up, guys? Nick White here. I do tech and coding stuff on Twitch and YouTube. Check the description for all my information. I do the premium leak code solutions on my Patreon. If you want to reach out to me, join the Discord. Try and get back to everyone. This is a partition uh, problem called Partition Labels. Uh, it has a lot of likes. I like the problem. Pretty cool. Pretty good. Perfect medium problem. Perfect difficulty label. Uh, I like this problem a lot. Um, a string S, so we have a string S of lowercase letters is given. So a string S, we're given a string S of lowercase letters. For example, all these lowercase letters. We want to partition this string, meaning split it up, into as many parts as possible so that each letter appears in at most one part. Okay, that's a little bit confusing the way they said that, but if a letter appear, we want to split up the string... And if a letter appears in one part, it cannot appear in the other parts that we split on. Okay. Um, and we want to return a list of integers rep, not representing, representing the size of each of the parts. So if we split up this giant string so that when we see A, it is in only one of the parts. So that means that, you know... We have to make sure that we split any time after the last index of A. This is, We have to split at least this far for the first part because the last A is right here. And if we split it right here, this A is going to be in a different part. We can only have one particular letter in one particular part of our split. So whenever we see a letter, we're going to have to make sure that the we split after the last occurrence of it. So... Uh, in this example, we have to split after the last occurrence of A, because we have A, we're like, okay, let's put this into one part. Okay, well, now we have to put go all the way to the end, to the last occurrence right here. So um, you'll also notice that the, when we add these other letters in, these can't be in the other parts either, like B and C. So for example, when we see B, luckily there's no Bs in the rest of the string. We also have to make sure we're, split, we're splitting after the last occurrence of B, and likewise, we have to split after the last occurrence of C, because we have to add C eventually. So um, this is one where it has A, B, and C. So we add all of those. It's all the fir from first to last occurrence of each of the letters. And then the next split is here. So we, we're like, okay, let's add D to the next split. But now we have to go to the last occurrence of D. Here's one. But while we were in between these two Ds, we see E, F, and G. So we have to go to the last occurrence of E, F, and G. Luckily, there's no more F and Gs. So we just go from here to here. So that's the second split. And then um, the third split is right here. We add, we add H at first. And we're like, okay, last occurrence of H right here. But now we saw uh, I and J. So now we have to go to the last occurrences of I and J, which is all the way at the end. So this is the last split with all of those letters only being within one particular group. Then we just return the lengths of each of the splits. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Let me know if it didn't make sense. I think I explained it pretty well. Um, so how do we do this? Well, if you just think about the way that I did it, that's pretty much how you solve the problem. Um, there's no like sorting or anything like that. We're not doing that. We want to solve this in a linear runtime. And we are going to, you know, we're going to have, we can't modify the string. We're not allowed to. That's, you know, part of this. Um, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to, like I just did in the example, we're going to add a letter um, to a split. We're going to say, okay, here's our first split. We're going to add a letter. And then we're going to have to go to find the last occurrence of that letter at least. And what we want is as many possible parts. So the you know most possible parts that we would want to do is if you know the all of the letters were different, right? For example, if it was A B C D E F G H I J K, if that was our input string, we would split it into a bunch of groups. We would do you know A is one, then B is one, then C is one. But the problem with these is we can only have the letter occur in one particular group. 
And if we split and we just did A as one its own group, we'd have A in another group, right? We'd have to. So uh, you have to make sure that you go all the way up to the last occurrence. And that's basically the whole idea here. That's the problem. Um, we're going to be doing constant space in this problem uh, minus the output array. The output array doesn't count for space. So first thing we're just going to do is we're going to say, okay, if S, if our input string is null or if the length is null, we're just going to return null. Uh, pretty standard in all of these problems, just making sure we got some valid input. We will initialize our output array. This does not count as any space because that's we otherwise we wouldn't be able to return anything so this is still constant space this is just how we're returning our output so this is what we're returning at the end the output array of the lengths of the splits right um what we're gonna do here here's the trick here's the whole problem we're gonna keep a map to the last indices of each character so we're gonna make a new int array of size 26 because we're dealing with lowercase letters here and these are going to be indexes, 0 representing A, 25 representing uh, Z, and we are going to go through each letter, and we're going to mark down in the array at the particular index of the letter. So if A is 0, we're going to put the last ind index we see A at. So when we get to here, so maybe this is index, you know, whatever it is. I mean, it's probably like 8 or something. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We would, wow, that was a good guess. But we would put um, 8 as the last index that we saw A at. And then we could check in this array to find the last index of each letter. So what we're going to do, we're just going to loop through this array. Um, and to do this, it's pretty simple, actually. We just do last indices of um, i of uh, s.char at i minus a. So this gets the current character we're looking at. So for example, a, it would do a minus a to convert it to a number. And um, that would be zero, right? So we would look up zero in this array and what we would set it to is i. So when we loop through it, i would be zero at first. We see a at zero, so we'd give i we'd give it a value of zero. We see a again at index three, zero, one, or two. We see an, at index two. We do, okay, last indices of a of index zero. Then we set it to two. We see it again at index three, four, five, six. Then we do a go to a's index we make the value six until we get to the end in the last index so this array will contain the last index we see each letter at and we could access the last index of each letter just by referencing the position of that letter in the alphabet so zero for a we'd get eight back and you know for b we'd reference one in last indices of one and we'd get the last index of b so we just fill up an array of the last index we see these letters at which is going to be super helpful for us. All we have to do now is we have to make, um, we're splitting this into substrings, so we're just going to make a starting variable and an ending variable to keep track of our substrings, and we'll move them whenever we break a partition off. We will add the length of it to our output array, and then we'll adjust our starting and ending boundaries so that we can move on to the next substring. It's a, that simple. It's really not that difficult. Um, so we're just going to be looping through the string once again, s dot length, um, i plus plus, and we're going to say end is equal to math dot max of end and last indices of s dot char at i minus a. So end is the end of our substring of our current partition and we're updating it to the max of the current end in the last index of the current letter so when we see a we say end is zero and we see a and we're like okay end is max of the current end which could have just been the, the character we're at and the last index of a which is eight because it is it at minimum it has to get to the last index of any letter that's in our substring. So we make the end automatically go to the last index of any character we're adding to our substring. What if 
Now, once we get to that current position while we loop through the string, so if i is equal to end, we have now reached the, because this will end will get updated over and over again um, until our substring is as long as it needs to be to have the last character of each character that's part of the substring. So when we see, in this case, a it's, really uh a really nice one because the first character we add is the autumn you know it includes all of the characters we're going to add in between but for d for example the last character of d goes to here but we also have an e in here so you know it'll add end will adjust to go to the end here but then we see an e and end will adjust again because it'll say okay last index of e so we have to make the end even go longer but once we get to the end, once our loop gets up to this character and we're, our index of uh, that we're looping through is equal to the end, that means we've officially found a partition that is valid. All of the characters in between it will not be in other partitions and we can add this to our output array. We can add the length to our output array, which output array dot add, all we have to do is end minus start plus one which end and start are just the boundaries of our current partition substring. And we add one just because we want the length of it, not index wise. So um, we just add that. Now we just have to adjust our starting boundary and starting boundary will be n plus one because we would, we're going to move on to a new partition whenever we're done adding the length of the current partition into our output array. And that is the whole problem. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Hopefully this runs. Uh, it doesn't run. What are we doing here? S is equal to null. Bad operand type for binary operator. If S is null or S dot length. So is equal to zero. My bad guys. Wouldn't be one of my tutorials if, um, you know, I didn't mess up, would it? So variable last indices. This is in dust. I spelled it right here. Let's just, oh, spelled it wrong there. Let's make sure it's spelled right. Sorry, I messed up a few times. There you go. So that is O of N in constant space because we don't count what we're returning. There's other ways to do it with linear space that are worse, but I'm not going to, I didn't show you that because I feel like this is easy enough to grasp and this is the best possible solution. So let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you have any questions. I think I explained it pretty well, but, um, yeah, just hit me up. I'll, I can answer whatever I use. I, if you look through my videos, I respond to the comments when people have questions. So let me know. I appreciate you guys for watching once again and anyone that supports me. Um, and uh, see you in the next one. Bye.